think it's coming up to daylight at the moment. It's a little after six. Moon is still up in the background up there. Fireplace is going. I think it's just coming up. It's real cold. About two degrees now. It was a bit warmer early this morning because I was collecting wood about two o'clock, one o'clock, and uh, to keep our fire going. So you can see your way around. And in the moonlight. I just want to catch the sun coming up, that's all. And this video is uh, on the iPad or the little tablet. I'm just trying it out. Man, the sheet's cold. I like Auckland's warmer than this. Easy. I see our fire in the background. Oh, hardly see it. That's the moon. Yeah. But I don't see the fire very much. Put me away. Unless the moon disappears, the sun won't be coming out yet. It's here to see. Lots of fish out there. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll turn it off and just do it in little bits. I thought I might see a UFO scooting across the sky as soon as the sun comes up. That's the last time I was at East Cape, is in that direction. And there was a little UFO flying around. Right on daybreak. So I thought as soon as the sun comes up, see if she's dancing around the sun. I'll go back on the moon there. So it's been pretty bright. The moon looks like it's a new moon, or a full moon, one or the other. I didn't check. I just checked the tides. We came down, it's supposed to be rough as anything, but it's not. It was just the opposite. So it should be calm in the bay over there, uh, where all those breakers are all the way out. The rocks right out of stopping the waves from crashing in that end. That's the only place here that um, a ship can come in, or their whaling boats used to come in over there. They had their village up on the hill up there. So it's all gone right from there across to that side, up the top there. It would be a, a nice area to develop, but uh, that wasn't my goal, was to work on the other side where the, um, the broken hill is. I want to go there and have a look. Um, Richard will take me through there the next time I come back. I'll have a meeting at the Te Horo Marae for the landowners of heading a, a 12 block. So we'll see what their thoughts are on what I'm going to do. I've just taken over as a, as a trustee of the, uh, for now, for now. Uh, the suggestions that they, they don't want trustees. So uh, we'll deal with that at the meeting. 
Uh, all I want is to get the consent from there with the local people to go out on the Ranfilly bank out there and operate the tidal turbines from around the corner on the A12 block and set our base up there. We want that uh, as a strategic point for training um, divers. Some more inclined to be looking after the sea and all those resources out there from that point up on the hill. So um, uh, my interest in uh, marine life and aqua farms uh, we'll be doing out there in the deep um, off the platforms and that's for putting or, or the sushi seaweed just some around the corner there it's supposed to be uh, I'll search that out the next time um, I come back here. the fire is blaring away now it's all stoked up oh man it's real cold wow if there's any cold things going on there's the fire and the moon at the same time glittering away there in the camp ground there um, so uh, our interest is around the other side although with my friend over here I went to school with him um, Dick Carlson um, so he's got his camp here and um, we just borrowed it for the night to keep warm I really wanted to just sleep here the night. I was wanting to do that um, uh, just to uh, uh, have part of the scenery here in the morning of the sun. I was going to go on the hill and take photos. We were going to camp up on top of the hill but it's freezing up there. We had a fire going but um, I think um, this will be just as good on the beach. I think the sun's coming up now, it's starting to get light over there. I don't want to keep this film rolling, uh, just in case I see some UFO scooting across the skies, but obviously there's not at the moment. I think as soon as the sun comes up, it starts dancing around, um, there'll be something to see. Uh, so the sun will start, moon will start disappearing soon, and our fire's stoked up. He's hot in there. Big lots of wood. We burnt a lot of wood last night. Uh, Dick, we burnt a lot of your wood last night, Lisa. <laughs> um, and so they're nice people. Uh, we'll get on all right. We'll get on all right. I think we'll get on with all of them, including Richard and, um, and uh, Leslie. I've, I've already had a good talk with them yesterday, so they feel pretty good about what we're doing here. And let everybody know what we're doing here. Oh, there comes the sun. I think it's, it's starting to come up. You know, starting to break, break, break. The film is about nine minutes now. I'll just keep it going. And let's use a bit of film up. This um, notebook. It's a notebook. It's pretty good photos on a notebook. They can't see me because it's dark. Moonlight, moonlight. I don't think you can see the moonlight. Oh boy. Uh, so I'll just do a bit of more talking while I'm waiting. Um, our proposals are for aqua farms for sushi, the seaweed, um, paringo or karingo, paringo. It's more finer uh, than the South Island, the karingo here, paringo. We call it paringo. Um, and sweeter, shorter, not as long as the South Island ones. But I did a, a lot of research in 2000, the year 2000, and we had a big Maori group that um, was doing projects, and I I did the seaweed one, and they picked that one as um, the best one uh, project at that time that had lots of features in it, a lot of potential, and a big market for it. 
well, there's not enough of the stuff here. And I've just heard that the goats are eating it. The goats are crumbling all over the rocks and eating all the sushi. Uh, that's not, not nice. Uh, and they're eating all the, the trees and everything around the place, on the farms. So um, I have to get rid of them and have some, some market for them to cull them out. Um, and uh, let the vegetation grow. We've got a problem with vegetation and erosion. It's always been a big problem over the years of uh, what uh, the government did and took all the trees out, the big trees and all the monitors. The worst thing that they were done to open it up for sheep and cattle. But then again, the sheep and cattle have their place in society and some form of revenue income. So that's what we want to do is create some revenue for our shareholders on that block and the community, um, especially out here in the sea. I want to go out there and police the seas and stop any intruders coming right in with their fishing, cleaning the whole place out. They're really cleaning the fish up out there. Uh, Travelling miles and miles and miles to come here to do it. So, um, come on son, hurry up. Uh, it's on 12 minutes now on the film. And um, I'm getting colder and colder. <laughs> Waiting. I just thought I'd make the most of it. There's the sun, the moon starting to mist out now and start to disappear. Uh, so the sun comes up, it's just starting to disappear. So that's as far as the sun got and it got stuck in that position from it rose over there. It came up there and it only, it, it ran out of gas and only got that far. And um, it's funny that still standing in one place and the earth is rotating uh, one or the other uh, so it's stuck fast there uh, so you can see now it's getting daylight a bit more there's still a dark patch on my camera uh, I'm just about to turn it off at 15 minutes and then I'll start it up again catch the morning sun or shall I just keep it going I'll just leave it running I want to get the whole thing the difference between the sun going coming up and the moon going down I can see just in the distance the, the sea is calm inside where the whaling boats used to come in and park there. The hotel over here and another hotel on the other side there. And they had a big village up here with all the English people landed here and the Spanish people landed here. So it'll be interesting to see who's at the meeting. But it's been a few years now uh, since I've um, come on these land blocks and or did anything because the trustees had tied up all our lands and we couldn't do anything with them um, and, and now we're able to do something that's my point I want to make at the meeting we've got to do something otherwise we lose it and it's been tied up with cows all along all our blocks have had cows on it and they've dominated the place for years so we've never got much uh, in the way of shareholding it out of it in our return, nothing much. In as much as 30 years, I've only got $900 out of the whole 30 years of 30 blocks of land. That's amazing. And I want to make this block work and it'll clean that out in no time. Uh, uh, no one does why it was made like that when if we had control of it, we wouldn't have had all that erosion if we had it in our control rather than the ground's control. They've just wrecked the whole place, all the hills, and dumped it in the sea. All that around the corner there at Rangitukia 
all the land over there, half of the land is gone on the Haho 7B. It's 30 hectares and 15 of it is gone. And I wanted to recover all the rest of it. It's gone down the river and like everything up the river, right, right up the back blocks, past um, Arataha, the, 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 the hills have caved in and because the logs have got dragged out and left big gouges in the, uh, for the water to run down the clay and it just pulled all the hill down. And so that's, the colonial government did that, took all our timbers out, all the valuable stuff and left the mess. Left and now put those poisonous trees on there. We wanted them all ripped out and taken out and put it back to Manukau. Put it back in, in native and um, give the earth a chance to live. That was our theme at our meeting on Wednesday, was that we want to chuck the cows out and put, well that's what the others were saying, not, not me. Uh, the majority of the owners want to chuck the cows out and let the block go back into um, natural vegetation. That's going to take a few years. Some of the land leases are tied up to 2027. That's a long period of time. We're still waiting for them to finish their lease so we can go and do something on our land. Those are our ancestral lands, all these lands, that all, all the way around through Maragato blocks, right up to Potikiru or Kiwaiapu um, area, right to Cape Ranoe, to Maraihara, through the back of Pohaka Inyangi, back um, onto the Tikitiki blocks, and then down to Rangitukia, and then back to Rangitukia, through the Haha, back to the East Cape, Lighthouse and back to Te Araroa and back the other way to Cape Runaway, Portaka. All that area, we have never, our Wānua family have never ever gone onto any block to lease it, to do anything yet because the trustees took it all and left us with nothing and freehold sold them. Uh, so we've got issues with that because I'm doing all the native titles back to the original owners straight to Britain and cutting out the uh, uh, colonials' titles, the, the Lynn's titles, uh, the New Zealand government, New South Wales government titles, and override them with the British titles now that the Brexit is in. Brexit, Brexit has gone back to the old Britain from EU, EU and Brussels. So now we're going to get the British to come here and fix all that lot up, uh, all their stuff up. And I've got the power note there and the debt levy instrument to fix that lot up. And not compensation, but we bill them for what the wreck, they wrecked this country and build a whole lot of them. That's what I want to do. And that's what the meeting will be about. How we fund all these projects like this tidal turbine for fuel. You don't have to have the oil. I don't want the oil out here like a lot of people don't want because it, it's a disaster if it spills and they've had many of those things happen and they make them deliberately spill so that it makes a disaster of the area to clean everybody out and put themselves in so we'll change all of that back revert back to our control of best for the environment and wreck the whole thing the government so we'll give them the bill that's what we're going to do uh, now we're on 19 minutes, uh, just gone a little bit further. Whew, taking a long time for the sun to come out, a bit late this morning. And um, I, th I think, I think you can see the sun start to disappear. And our mate is stoking the fire up. I think he didn't sleep too well. Um, because of being cold, I think, and uh, the fire I had to go and get some more wood to keep it going because we chewed a lot of wood up and he kept it going right up to midnight and then I took over and kept it going from then. Uh, start dragging wood back into forge uh, and up went my pulse on my little Fitbit watch. So there we go, there's the sun starting to come up in that red background. You can start to see the sea soon, I'll leave this rolling. I'll make a long video of it so they can see every bit of it um, how that changes from the moon
The moon hasn't moved much. I don't know why it's standing still. Because the earth is probably going away from it. And in that sort of line. So I want to see whether the, the moon rose about there. In that direction. So the sun will come up in the same place. And then we'll mozzy on back to Gisborne. I'll go down the council, or to Gisborne District Council, and get all the plans for here. Uh, I usually get everything out because I draw plans up and make buildings, site plans, and uh, get the permits all sorted. And I also want to get um, the hill around the other side. The best way to stop the erosion on that is to bang the bum thing down and take a few years to do that but we can very much use the material there as a resource um, concrete. that's what I think and so I'll do that instead and uh, make use of it for building materials um, steel we need lots of steel if we can get steel in here somehow we'll be alright if we get it on the other side uh, find a place to get a ship to come in, that was the idea of coming here too, as well, um, uh, to get a ship to come in, and have the divers go along to check, well, I'll dive myself and have a look along the channel where the ship comes in to see, oh, the depth meter will do it, and to see where to put a wall through, or something for a pier for the ships to tie up and unload, uh, but that's a long way from here to where I want to set up on the block that I'm going on, or unless I can reach this block here, the A10 block on the other side, it's, it's not this one here, and the other side, so I just sort all that out today, and uh, also sort out um, uh, some other matters as well, um, while I'm here in Gisborne. So I can't see the sun coming out yet, no, it's, it's red morning, shepherd's morning. It's supposed to be blowing up like Billyo, but it's not, it's not even. So that's supposed to be a easterly, south-easterly wind. Uh, it's more or less looking like it's a south-east, alright. If it's a west, it'll be flat here. I can't see the sea. You can only see the moon in the fire dying out, huh? so I've got to get warmed up afterwards. But I just want to stand here and wait for the sun. <laughs> Long time, man. It's what time now? Two? No, that's the wrong time. Well, not even up yet. That's such a long movie. I don't think I want to wait. It's just black, dark uh, video. I think that was, you can see it's the moon. Up there. Anyway, a couple of minutes and then that's it. So, yes, for those people who are watching us on uh, Facebook, um, lots happening up Waitangi and the, of course the Cook Street, 66 Cook Street, 61 Cook Street. Uh, 77 Cook Street, um, so we're going to sort that lot out. Uh, um, don't think they're going to get away with it, and the police in there as well. Uh, so it's a lot of fraud going on in this country, in any country. They, they're not going to get away with it, not with Maui and the British, the new British government. It's, the, it's their responsibility. They're the ones that let them do it, so they'll have to fix it up.
and fast. So that's the sea over there, that's, you can see in the background, just starting to see the sea. What a long time, it's 26 minutes, about half an hour, waiting for a sun. You can see up in the cloud, you can see the clouds starting to open up now, and the moon starting to disappear, you can see it's starting to fade away. And our fire's going out, man, I'm going to be cold when I go back, I hope it's, it should be still going, there's lots of big embers in there, shy is so big. Big fire. Fell out of the uh, out of the fireplace and came right out and and burned on the ground in front. So there we are. So now you can see the sun just starting to poke its head up and starting to be daybreak. See? That's just starting to appear on the horizon. And the moon's starting to disappear, starting to go misty, a misty haze while it gets light on that end. So that's what it looks like. In the east, this is the closest to the sun. The, di the distance, physical distance to the sun is closest here on this coastline at um, East Cape. North Island, New Zealand. Uh, I'm standing on a beach in Port Albanui and the tide is full right in. It's right up on the beach now and the boats are coming going here. This is the first time I've been here and um, I just wanted to uh, show you a bit of the place. Yeah, see, see that picture, a picture perfect, right there. I'll leave it on that so you can see the sun coming up now. That's what I wanted to do, to get a picturesque of a rising sun in the east. There you see the sun rising, straight out there, and the moon disappearing over the horizon on the hill there, towards the west. So there, I'll just put that back on there. Finally, from darkness to daylight, I'm coming out, beautiful picture. Here we have it folks, the breaking of daylight in New Zealand, out here in New Zealand on the eastern tip of the North Island, New Zealand. This is where they landed. The English people scramble onto the beach and set their tents up over here and then put their hotel up and started drinking and saying, we got here. We're free, but really not. The Crown caught them up here and put them here. Uh, so, um, um, Leslie is, um, is English, and my Rogan family are English, Scottish, and my Cosgrove family around in the area is Irish. So that's my um, my uh, family. Uh, been on the lands for a long time, but uh, our Wanoa family is more. Tahitian, and on my mother's side, Rarotongan, so a mixture of Kaikas and Wanoa. Uh, so they've been around on these lands for a long, long time. Uh, we have marais that have been built by my grandfather and maintained Matauru Wanoa right through the Portikirua Ki Waipu area. Most of the marais he built and maintained. Some of them have gone, but there's about 15 stretched from Portaka through to uh, um, 
Bay and uh, Kunuruku, uh, Te Araroa, um, Horoera and uh, Teki Teki, Rangitukia Teki Teki and um, Marae Hara and uh, back at the back through to uh, um, Marangairoa Marae. It used to be Marangaro Marae but they changed it to uh, Aotere Marae but its name is Mar Marangairo Marae. Um, the whole lot of the Marangaro land blocks are on the side from Tiararo uh, East Cape to uh, Tikitiki um, Rangitukia. All that side is the Marangaro land blocks that belong to the Marangaro Marae and my grandfather there, Mataru Wanoa. So that part is there and all these other land blocks where um, one of 30 blocks as an owner shareholder and this is the first time I'm attempting to go on one of them attempting after as much as 50 years to go on to one land block and start making some revenue for ourselves we haven't got nothing out of any of the lands yet and that was echoed at the meeting on Wednesday the same story we've never had any revenue from any of them of any thing to live off and the cows have had it all these years the cows have had the land and whatever they've got out of it we've never seen much of that so I'm going to make one project fix the whole lot of them up and don't have to worry anymore uh, that's one project of many um, in the sea bed area and also on the land to make something for ourselves and the shareholders um, and the community for that matter uh, where my focus is so here we go i'm still got this beautiful picture of the sun coming up and the moon going down and our fire still going out and i better get warmed up with it because my fingers are freezing freezing jamie jamie it's beautiful here and i haven't got up the top of the hill yet because tumutumu tumutumu tumu fire or told me not to go up the top of the hill and brian and i mean richard and leslie said go up the hill they said oh what are you doing down here you should have gone to have a look and he wanted to take me up but i said no tumu tumutumu paro is bossy said the lease has to finish before we're allowed to go up I wanted to go up there and take the, this picture up there so uh, but this is just as good on the beach um, so uh, um, oh man my fingers are freezing freezing so Jamie when I get back to Auckland I've got a bit of work to do um, and I can very well say on this video I'm thankful that um, Richard has um, um, warmed the, to the idea of us coming there and he will be at the meeting of, at Te Horo Marae when I uh, make arrangements for that for the uh, landowners of that block the uh, uh, Hiringa Beitoa block and also the Hiringa A10 block I want to get a lease on that uh, or not a lease that's the block he's got I wanted to uh, um, mine the, uh, the Broken Hill part where the most, the worst erosion is, so I'll get that all at the council today. That's for all the concrete material I want to use, the clay works, set up the business out of that lot. So that'll be good. I don't have to uh, worry about lease or anything like that because uh, Richard is on that block and got the lease on that block. So I've got access through there through him. But Tumutum is, uh, uh, I've, got to, I've got to talk to them and tell them um, the arrangements we've got. But that's at the meeting. So well, I'm pretty good at meetings. So this tide is very high. This high tide. Man, this sun is taking its time. And the moon is taking its time to disappear. And my fingers are taking this time to get warm. 
I'm gonna put one in my pocket. I just want to see the sun come up. I've let this video run all this long. It's taken 35 minutes because uh, my videos normally are one hour or right or three two nine two point nine nine gigabytes is about one hour and it cuts off uh, the videos on my camera. But this one that uh, the notebook might be longer, I don't know. So I'll just leave it running. I just wanted to get this view of a full view of the sun coming out and um, take a, a little bit of while. It took a little bit of while to uh, sort of film a bit too early. And um, however, as the moon is still there, you can just about make make out our batch up there and you can see the sea there, starting up here oops, so I dropped that um, oh, all the rocks are covered all the rocks out there are covered so there's no way you, you're going to drive a ship through there not knowing where to go because you'll hit the rocks and the channel you can't come down the channel without um, hitting those rocks because some of them are sticking out of the water just about. Um, it's very dangerous to come in there, just steam in there without hitting one of those rocks. Uh, so that's what it looks like. Beautiful. The sun is just coming over the horizon. So the difference between the sun coming up from looking there and the moon up there, starting to disappear, is sitting on six o'clock. Dropping this. Careful not to drop the in the sand. It's six forty six. Six forty six. On Friday, the 22nd of July 2016. So, very soon it will be the sun will poke its head up. Full tide. It looks good to take a boat out. That's what. You can see all the dark down that end. Oh, it's, it's, it's dark at the corners, only where the sun comes up. See? Now you can see the sun rising in its entirety of this video, 39 minutes so far. As soon as it comes up I'll cut it off and that'll be it. And the moon is still just starting to disappear up there. We can't even make out our batch yet. Done the sniffle now. Sniff because I'm getting cold and my fingers are numb. It's numb. You know, I'll stand over the fire when, fire when I get back. All this for this. I'm standing here. Freezing. Anyway, that's what I wanted to do this morning. I wanted to make some good videos. Um, uh, now that I'm here in this area, uh, and I was going down the other end, I, I will still go to East Cape. You can see it right in the background there, and East uh, East Cape Island, and but. Uh, 
I think here would be a good start in this area especially for the platform out there on Renfrewley Bank I want to do a lot of research out there for the locals and people and training centre up on the A12 block for divers that's my main interest is divers I want a whole heap of divers to train them up um, well get uh, licensed trainers to train them all up and stay on the block I want to build the houses there for them to um, uh, rent the houses on a scheme uh, the government should put that up or not we'll do it ourselves and uh, for overseas students that are coming here well I want to have permanent divers full-time living there and we're, we're going to put an airport in there to fly people in and out um, regular trips out and bring people in so we've got all that to do um, from that hill uh, from the materials from that hill we've got that plans all set to go and uh, building materials and stuff and machinery and things so that'll be uh, something good for the area you notice all those blocks on that side have got trees on it you see they've got no erosion that's that's what it looked like all those blocks here looked like that before on the other side that have ruined where where they've cut the trees down it's ruined it and fallen down all the erosion the government's going to get the bill for that from me and the locals for wrecking it for all these years um, at least from 1933 70, 70, 80, 60 years they have wrecked this this land they are going to get a bill for it that's all I say here we go, the sun's coming up oh man, I want to go and get warmed up I'll stop it on an hour and that'll be it I think that's enough, long enough See you in another couple of minutes. Moon starting to disappear. So that's around about seven o'clock now. You can see our patch in the background. You can see how the picture has changed. from the edge of it there to the edge there so the sun's right in the middle of it poke it here up in the middle of it now you can start to see the other end of the beach starting to appear that's on about 5 minutes to 7 and there's the sun starting to come and poke it here up and then now you can see East Cape in the background, right down there at the end on the left there and come down back to the middle so there's the sun right there in the east All right, this is the uh, equator line uh, that's running south up to the top of the world closest to us so it shows you that north up is the wrong way around on the way that the experts have drawn the map of the world upside down the wrong way up with north up it's supposed to be south up and we're, we're sitting at the top of the world closest to this sun here that's putting his head up at the moment okay so that's that's a real picturesque of the, that end of the beach and that's the south end and the north end, East Cape, right in the background there. So the sun is starting to light the place up. I'm going to reach down here and me in the background. If you can see me there. Good morning, John Wanara here at Port Awanui, east of Ruatoria, East Cape, Poverty Bay. New Zealand. So I'm freezing to death and 
my fingers are numb as hanging out. I better get back to my fireplace soon and heat them up. But I just want to take the moon for the last time. It's see, it's close to the trees now. It's just disappearing over the trees at about seven o'clock. And you can't even see our batch over there yet. And you can see a bit of the fire. You can see the fire flicking. Flicking, see? And so we've got that far so far. See? The sun is its glow. There. It's around about there. That's what the sun looks like rising in the east. It's come from um, East Island, so when it's seven o'clock here, it, it's really it's six hours behind there, and then the next place is London. Will be um, no mid midday on East Island. It's midday. It's it's one it's one o'clock on East Island. Straight in that direction. And it's um, 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. now in England and London and Ghana. It's 7 p.m. now and 7 a.m. here, right? Okay, why I'm standing here in New Zealand at the east, eastern tip of New Zealand, it's 7 o'clock here a.m. and it's 7 p.m in London and it's 1 p.m. on East Island that's exact because when it's 6 o'clock in the morning here 6 a.m. it's 6 p.m. in London and 12 noon on East Island so it's one hour ahead at the moment okay so that's what I wanted to say this is the perfect triangle uh, mirror image square inside a circle of light and there's your light so this this is a perfect title that we hold to moai statue standing in london all right the moai statue standing in london now is one is 7 p.m and moai standing here at the east cape is 7 a.m and Moai standing on East Island is 1 p.m. There, that's what, that's what I'm saying now. Okay? And there's the moon up there, sitting just on the edge of the trees, over the horizon, over the hill. I'm just lining that moon up with the sun. And it's about the right same line. It's in the same line as the sun. You can see the sun glow now in the background behind that cloud. And it hasn't quite showed itself yet. So now we can see the outline of East Cape there in the background quite clearly now. And the south end of the beach with the rocks covered so you wouldn't drive a ship in there, you'll hit them. And that's what wrecked ships in the old days. They thought it was flat and shallow until they hit the rocks. And that's rocks, so you, don't, you can't see that there's rocks there. So that's our theme for this video. It's sitting on 49 minutes now. I'll just let it go a little bit more to catch a bit of the sun itself. It, it hasn't showed itself yet. It will start to come over the ridge soon, so I'll catch that. I'll catch that part of it. But that's really, really shows you that where we are sitting here is the mark point, the, the survey mark point of our title to Moai, um, standing on East Island, and and. We're standing here for Moai, and Moai standing in England, in London, um, as being our 
uh, original title to Maui is God, Law, L-O-R-E. So that's, that's what I wanted to say today to this video, uh, to make certain that we have our history intact with Maui. And this sunrise, Desmond just came down to have a look and he's just heading back to now you can see the outline of the batch over there. Our friend's batch just that over there. See the sun's just the moon's just disappearing out the back end there. I'll have a look at the time exactly. So we've got a record of this. Uh, watch I don't drop the video. My fingers are frozen. Frozen. So now the time is exactly seven o'clock. I'll put it early on the time. Recording the time. So that's really what I wanted to do. Other than that, the sun is going to appear soon. But this is what I wanted to show you, the break of day. And the moon is still shining its head. It's still shining its head right in that point there. It's in a dead line, dead straight line with where the sun's coming out. I think I'll just make my way back and hopefully the sun will, will poke its head up on my way back to the batch. Um, so it's a long time coming up. I'll make it go to an hour so that we'll have a full coverage of the sun. full video, full hour, so it's about another seven minutes, oh I just about dropped it, beautiful view, beautiful view. Go back. I'll go back the other way now, and this is where the village used to be before up here, Fort Awanui, up on that ridge up there. They had their buildings up there. It was a nice place, but I, I don't know what happened uh, with why it disappeared and everything. But that's on that block there, um, and um, this was all sea here. This is, this has all been washed up. Um, from the riverbed, all this land here has been washed up. So the battery is getting low now, and I better switch it off. That's the end of that. Battery is getting low. Okay, so I'm going to finish off now with this video. See you later. Bye. Oh, it's still running. Sorry, it's still running. I'll just make my way back. So I'll just finish off, the battery's got to be charged up soon, so I'll just start heading back this way. But, uh, so that's, that's basically us. There's a fire over there, you can see the fire burning, but I'm going to go and stand by the fire now. So that's me for now. Um, glad to bring this video to you, uh, John Wano, um, so uh, I'm freezing man, my fingers are, are really, I have to go back and put them on the fireplace, so I'll just turn around and head back, I think we're, we're still rolling, and I'll go back to the fire, and heat my fingers up, so this is a roving report for people watching, what I've been doing 
and uh, uh, putting a series of videos together. There's our fire. I just want to step on this couch over here, but uh, it's it's a wonderful place. Yeah, see. There's a fire. Oh, that's better. Now I can heat up. Yeah? We're back to the fire again. I left the fire and now I'm back to the fire. Oh, that's hot. Oh, man. Thank goodness for that. Warm my fingers up. Warm my fingers up. Really freezing. The battery's getting flat on this video. So we're going to head back to Gisborne shortly and um, get some plans from the council. Go and see the Maryland court. I think they're familiar, familiar with my face. Um, go and tune them up a bit. Okay, I'm getting better now. Get a bit of life in my fingers. Yeah, so that's more or less the view. And... Uh, I got my little hat on to keep me warm and so thank you very much everybody we'll see you later and we'll catch you back in Auckland bye